what I'm going to be talking to you about today, local, global, and the missing data link, what that's really going to be about, when you think of local, a lot of people think location, and therefore think of social. And yeah, we're going to talk about that as well. But we're really going to talk about how social is really the missing data link, but how it's not being used to its full potential today, and how you, the people in the audience today, you really can look at data in a very different way and get a lot more out of it than you are today. And we're going to show some very simple examples on, on how that's being done. And so why am I up here talking about it? You know, why Banjo? Um, many people uh, who've come up today have talked about our social app. Uh, and the reality it is that the majority of Banjo is not the social app, right? The majority of Banjo has been about the data and has been about um, everything around location and how we look at things quite differently. And you're going to see that today. But we're not going to talk about Banjo. We're going to really just dive into the data that's around us every single day, all this public data that's around us, and how we can make more use of it. So I'll just, you've heard me mention the word data already three or four times, and we hear these you know, words that are overused every day, big data, signal to noise ratio. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm sick of hearing them because at the end of the day, what does it mean for us, the person sitting out here in the audience? What, what, can, we do, what can we do with this data, right? So we're just literally at the emphasis of being able to utilize this data in a, in a meaningful way. So <clears throat> when we look at the, all the data that's being collected, we've all become experts at it, right? Everybody here uh, works with a company or owns a company that says we're collecting a lot of data. But what are we doing with that data? Like truly, what are we doing to make it actionable, right? Today, you know, we employ a lot of data scientists or we have a lot of data analysts looking at data and giving us these fancy charts. But is it really a way that we as human beings understand and can take action in our daily lives? Is, is it the normal way that we do things? And the answer is no. And social for me, and for, for most of you sitting out of this audience, is, is the missing link. It really is. I mean, it's people now walking around with connected devices, whether it's smartphones or watches or it's all about the Internet of Things. It's really brought social and the data and the information now that can enrich our decisions and make our decisions better. And how are we doing that? So, so how, what's the missing link? So if I showed you this picture today of this tornado, right? Many of you just said, well, that's a picture of a tornado. But in the context of, that, of this is if you were from a place in the world, a place in the United States that has tornadoes, you would think very different about this photograph. You'd be thinking about, where can I get shelter? Right? What's the damage that's been done here? What's, where's water available after this hits? What emergency services are available? Right? And that can be done today. Right? It's about taking all of these different data sources, with social being a really big one, and combining them in real time to make a difference. So here it's about recognizing, for example, in the top, you're recognizing a photograph of a, of a tornado that's just forming, recognizing it right now. Not only do you know where that tornado is at right now, but with these other data sources, you know where the emergency services are at. Emergency services better off now knows where you're at, right? You know what stores, right? You know purchasing data. You know what stores have water left, what have food left, what stores are open, what buildings are damaged, what medical services. You know from the, the weather reports of what's going on. And even the weather tells us, hey, there's a tornado warning. But even as good as the weather is today, it doesn't know exactly when that tornado hits, what the damage is. It has a lot of assessing to do, a lot of data crunching. But with the power of bringing all of these things together and processing it in a way that you and I as human beings understand, we can get a lot more out of it. So how do we do this? How do we make all this data, all these things you just saw with that one tornado, more actionable? Well, first it just goes about collecting all these things that we've said we've become experts at, right? All this unstructured and structured data. But, but what do we do with it? And, and truly, this is now becoming one of the hardest data science problems on the planet. Because there's so much data out there. And is all this data all very, really valuable? And I would say the answer is no. It's the data that's actionable that we, that we as human beings can understand and make a difference right now. And when I say right now, I mean real time. I mean, people all the time say we do something in real time. I was just on the phone with somebody yesterday, and they said, oh, our company is all about real time. We process things, and we give you an answer today. Today is not real time. When I started this speech uh, five minutes and 10 seconds ago, 
that's already the past. Real time is literally right this second. Boom, it's gone. We have to be able to process things like we process things, we as human beings, right? We process things in real time. So we have to be able to process all of these different data sources in real time. And it's not just about, we just looked at this, the data source from that tornado. That's one place in the United States, a few square miles. We're talking about the entire planet. Every single square inch of this planet right now, all the publicly data that's available right now, how do we process all that so we can understand and make better decisions? So I'll give you an example. So we as human beings process things visually, right? It's the fastest way that we process things. And we have to figure out a way in order to take all of this data together and make it understandable to you and I through the way that we process. That's visual. So how would we do that? Many of you today traveled here uh, via your car up the 101 or over the Bay Bridge, and you used your favorite navigation app. Maybe you used Google Maps, maybe you used an, uh, a traffic app. But this is an example of where data, even in its most simplest form, is not being used today in a way that you can make better decisions. You yourself can make the best decisions. You as a company can make better decisions. And so today, you're on your way here. Maybe there was an accident reported by the person using the app. Or maybe there was a red, uh, a red line, if you will, on Google Maps that says there was traffic ahead. And it gave you a detour, told you somewhere else to go. Well, you, you, made, you didn't make that decision. The computer made the decision of where you're going to go, and you just followed it. Most people in here would just say, OK, I got to get off. I got a detour. Boom, done. But now let me give you a change with the data that is available today, and the data in a way that you would understand. With traffic cameras that are out there today, one source of data, right? Social data, and believe it or not, people are taking pictures all around us and videos all around us on social networks you've never heard of that are publicly available, that are being shared. And yes, people are taking photos and videos while they're driving. And so all of a sudden now, you're coming up to 101, and today you made a detour because it says there was traffic as you hit 280. But what if on that same app or that same device that's in your car telling you that, it visually presented a photograph to you of a tractor trailer turned over up the road. It gave it context. Context being up the, up the road, there's a tractor trailer turned over, it's telling me now to get off the road and go here. You would, you would have followed the computer, right? It would, you wouldn't even know, had to think about it, almost subconsciously. But in that same example, and every single person in this room, or just about everybody would have made that detour, if it had been just a minor uh, fender bender off to the side of the road, and I showed you a picture of that, Right? This app showed you a picture of it. You would have done what? You would have just kept going. And you probably wouldn't have been late uh, to this or to the meeting or wherever you're going. That's the power of showing you things visually today in real time so you can make better decisions. Right? It's adding context. And when we talk about context, we're talking about location. So like I said at the beginning of this, when we think about location, many of us think uh, right away about social and location. But well, location truly is inherent in everything we do. I mean, we're all here right now. Even when you don't think about location, you're subconsciously thinking about location. You're watching um, ESPN last night about sports, and it's showing you your favorite team. You were thinking about the location. If it was an away game and you saw the stadium away, your brain was processing where that was, the context of it, whether you're conscious of it or not. It's because that's how we are, are trained to see things. But that's not the way we process data today. That's not the way that we give you data today to make better decisions. So sometimes we have to infer location. And this is going to be, uh, I think, a topic that uh, a lot of people are going to be interested in based on you know, what I hear every time I talk about inferring location. Because it goes to the heart of what most of the people in this room do, whether it's you know, through brands or retail or, or through marketing. Most location is given in, in some data sets like weather and traffic. We have location. But in, in, in when I talk about social and location, so many people are quick to point out, oh, well, location isn't passed most of the time. right? It's just a small fraction of the data. Regardless if that's true or untrue, and, and I would argue that it's, it's untrue, there's, there's location and a lot of data out there, it's just the way you've got to extract it. We have got to become experts 
at inferring location. Why? Because just like we saw, it's the way that the human mind processes things. It's the way that we add context to everything we're looking at. And so this picture's been sitting up here now about 15, 20 seconds. And most of you recognize right off the bat what? It's the Eiffel Tower. Right? It's not the whole Eiffel Tower, but it's the Eiffel Tower. Maybe if, for those of you who haven't been to Paris, you may recognize this from the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, uh, but you would have noticed in the, in, in the background that, uh, you know, the hotel isn't behind it. So your brain said, no, it's not the, it's not the uh, Las Vegas Strip. But it's what we call filling in the gaps. Our brain fills in the gaps. We have to be able to fill in the gaps with data. How do we do that automatically? And so, <clears throat> to take just a short little aside, this started a long time ago for me, and I, and I didn't realize that at the time, but... Uh, in a different lifetime ago, I was a crime scene investigator. And one of the things you do when you're a crime scene investigator is you go and you get certified uh, as a fingerprint examiner, right? And you, you go back east and you go to these schools. And it's not like you think it is. Like, so everyone's watching television and you, you, someone gives a fingerprint and they run it through a computer and in like one second it's gone through a billion fingerprints on the planet and it's matched it. I wish it was that easy, but it's not. But the concept is... The concept is with our fingerprint, we've all seen it, they take different markers, right? We call them whirls and swirls, different points that are on a fingerprint, and it forms a unique pattern, a unique pattern only to you unto yourself, right? And it could be the same way with visual data, right? And that's what we've been able to do today. So for example, here's just a, 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 some stadiums. And I don't know the exact number we have, but I would say we probably have 100 million photos and videos uh, of stadiums that, that we have, right, that are, that are available. And each one of these has location associated with it already. We know that this is a stadium, you know, at t ballpark here in San Francisco. We know that this is a stadium in Istanbul, Turkey. And in each one of those, if you look at it as a fingerprint, each one of them is unique, right? And I mean unique to the point where it may be a close-up of a stadium, there is a crack in the concrete. That crack in the concrete, there's no other crack that's exactly like that crack in the concrete, right? And then just like a logo would be, if I could take a, a fingerprint or a logo and you turn it sideways or, or you make it flat or, or you turn it upside down, the orientation of the photo shouldn't matter, right? And so if you could take a look at these today and you could say, great, this is what these fields look like, this is what these stadiums look like, and you're thinking to yourself, well, there's not enough to, to map every square foot. And maybe every square foot's an exaggeration. But the other day I looked at at t Ballpark and I saw, well, how many videos and photos are available? And a video is nothing more than just a, a massive amount of photos, right? But you think about it. For those of you who have been to at t Ballpark here, any other stadium, think about how many times you've seen a smartphone out. Think about how many times people are, when they go to get their smartphone out and they're taking a selfie, or they're, getting, they're just taking a video, they just do a quick sweep to get to where they're gonna start shooting the video at. That quick sweep, right? That was right there, 200 photographs of that stadium. So really, all of this data already exists, but we're just not understanding it in a way, right, where we can infer location. So in this case here, we've taken a look at all these stadiums now, uh, as an example, and when this picture is taken, and this doesn't have to be a picture in social, this could be the old analog way. Does everyone remember the 35 millimeter camera? And you take a picture and you have a, a three by five glossy. That has no data associated with it at all. But today you could give me that three by five glossy that has almost no identifiable information in the background and immediately it would say, this is at Soldier Field in Chicago, right? And it's not just because of the columns there or the flagpole, but it's, it goes into a lot of different things, the angles of things, just like that fingerprint did. But imagine now we're able to infer location from the majority of the world's data, the majority of the world's social and photo data. And not just infer it, but infer it in the moment that it happens, in the second that it happens. Because that is what the big difference is here. It's not just about grabbing all this data. It's about understanding the data, making sense of it the way that we as human beings make sense of it, right? And then being able to process that like we do right now, real time, this second, not crunching data a year from now, doing some analyst report, because it's too late. You've already missed out on the opportunity. <clears throat> so if we can bring together all of these different forms of data, what, what do I mean by different forms of data? 
weather data, traffic data, traffic cameras, uh, flight data, financial data, obviously social data, every single social network in the world that y where it has public information. If you were able to bring that all together in real time, call it the Air Traffic Control Center of real-time data, and you were able to understand every single photo and video as it went through, just as if a human being was looking at every photo and video and able to add context to it. Just like if you were looking at that tornado, if you're not from that area of a tornado, somebody is and could add context to it. So imagine every single photo having the context as if someone who was the expert of looking at that photo knew everything about it. That's what we're talking about here. It would change everything, right? You would be able to make better decisions. And we call this the crystal ball. It's something that you could be able to look at every day and ask it, what's going on here? What happened 10 minutes ago or a year ago at this location so I can make better decisions for my business? We don't think of it in that way today because data is just not presented to us that way today. It's too difficult, right? And what I'm saying is we have to be able to present data to people, to ourselves, in a way that we already process everything. So what would you do if you had a crystal ball? So I just added some examples here. Um, so I'm, I'm originally from uh, Kauai, Hawaii, so the first one is Hawaii, but uh, the, the this was done this, if you're going on vacation. Just something so simple that we do in our lives, but we spend so much time agonizing over, right? How, what's going on in Kauai today, right? A lot of people go like to TripAdvisor to look, oh, what's the best hotel? I want to see right now, there's a massive amount of information that a way that I could process it and understand the context if I could see it visually. If I could get access to it right now. If I could look at a crystal ball and say what's happening in the Hanalei Bay and the North Shore of Kauai right now this second. What happened last night? I'm going to be there on a Friday night. What happened on Friday night? So I get better context for what I want to do. Right? Stop wasting time making better decisions. Better decisions for myself, better decisions for the marketers that are there for me. Traffic we just discussed. I mean, I can't tell you how many times this will save people being late for a flight, missing a flight, being late for work, your first day of work, all these things that stress us out. Now in an instant, all of these driving apps are made better because we have this context that we can understand instantaneously, almost subconsciously. The tornado example. I mean, think about creating the 21st century emergency broadcast system where you're literally able to make a difference in people's lives, save lives, because you're getting information to them, not hours later, but in the seconds that it happens. Like when the weather, uh, National Weather Service issues a tornado alert, imagine, in, a, in that moment, a tornado starts to form. Just the funnel cloud itself, someone's taking a photograph of it or a video, and it's getting shared, right? And a lot of times, there's no text with it. People aren't saying, hashtag tornado. Forget about hashtags, forget about keywords. It's not the way we process things. We process things visually. So visually, as soon as we see that funnel cloud, we have to be able to understand the location of where it's happening, and what that means for us, and all those other data sources that we weren't even thinking about have to be processed in a way that it shows us visually what can be done. Retail data. What's happening at every store, every mall, every shopping place in the world right now? What are the trends? Not what are the trends, what are people talking about? That's one trend, right? And we can track that today. And we all put in our hashtags or our keywords and say, are these people talking about this at store? But again, what if you can infer every photo that's taken, you could infer location. Oh, these people are outside this shop. Oh, interesting. This shop doesn't have signage. This is the most photographed place in Las Vegas right now. And no one's taking advantage of it from an advertising standpoint, right? Imagine knowing that. Imagine looking at a globe and knowing the most photographed places in the world for people that are actually shopping right now and they're taking selfies or photographs of their good time or eating an ice cream cone, but the advertising behind them is, is nil, doesn't exist because no one knows that that's the most shared photograph. Why? Because we don't process data that way today. We don't think about it in that way. Breaking news, and that's an easy one for us. I mean, uh, we, we break the news every day and I won't go into all the stories we break, but the big, big stories that you guys hear about um, around the United States. I'll give you one example, like the train crash from two weeks ago in Amtrak, uh, NBCU in, uh, in Philadelphia was the company that broke that news, and when they were interviewed about it, I think it was just in the San Francisco paper, they were talking about how we were the ones that gave them that breaking news story. And then it's the fear of missing out. 
right? We all have a fear of missing out. People are missing out, they're not here at these conferences. That's why there's some empty seats. They're probably stuck in traffic because they read their wrong traffic directions and they're off on some detour. Um, but the reality of it is that we all have a fear of missing out. So imagine being to be able to be everywhere right now, anywhere in the world, seeing it through the eyes of the people that are there, seeing it through the different data sources that are there, right? And when you could do this, right, it'll make a massive difference, not just in your life as, as personally, but it'll make a massive way, uh, difference in the way that you do business and for your customers, right? And so I'm going to leave you, let me see if this thing goes to, well, the clicker stopped working, but I'll leave you with, with this one more thought. If we can bring all this data in and we can understand it in this way, and we can now process it in a way that all of us can understand things because the way that we process our everyday decisions, right? We've talked about bringing all this information in and understanding it that way, so now we understand our past. We understand our past clearly. Everything that's happened everywhere, right? And we've just talked about what right now means and understanding our presence, right? Right now, what is truly happening this second? And so if we understand our past and we understand the right now, then I am telling you, you can understand and you can predict your future and you will have the power to determine your outcome and not have it determined for you. Thanks very much.